Hello and welcome to Colin's Time to Bake. Baking with the Bake Off. This week we're making legato bar. And if you're gonna make it at home, my advice would be don't. So this week I had to make a legato bar, which basically means the green cake. But this week on the Bake Off it was cake week and that was the technical challenge. So therefore, I'm going to be doing the technical challenges. If you are just new to my channel, welcome. If you are following again, Welcome back. I bake with the Bake Off every single year for the past four years. This will be my fifth year. Um, I've been doing the technical challenges, which means that any technical challenge they have, I go, I can do that, and then I give it a try, and then I learn sometimes that I can't. This week, I have managed it, but I don't think I'd ever make it again. Okay, so you're here to watch me make this and possibly learn what you need to do as well along the way. So let's get started. If you go to the greatbritishbakeoff.co.uk website, the recipe is on there. That's the one that I'm following. Here is your visual guide to what I did. Not necessarily correct, but what I did. By the way, if you are following along and you are just listening, I do have the details of exactly how much you need and the little chatty thing, just the little, what's it called? Just words down below. So you need to start making the marzipan first. For that, you will need to grind your 300 grams of pistachios. Grind them up in a food processor. Make sure they are fine, finely ground. I didn't really do this. I thought I had done enough, but no, I thought I could have made it more of a fine powder. Add icing sugar to this and grind until completely fine. And then put this into a mixing bowl. To add one large egg white. And if you have it, pistachio essence, I didn't really search for it, I didn't have it, so I figured the pistachios would just be enough of a flavour. And combine this together. If it's a little too sticky, maybe add a little bit more icing sugar. If it's a little bit too dry, maybe add a little bit of water. Once you have made this into like a dough and it's all come together, wrap it up in cling film and put it to the side. What I did was I put it in the fridge and that solidified and made it much more difficult to roll out. Just put it to the side, it'll go a bit solid, but at least it'll be malleable. Now you want to put your oven on to 180 degrees Celsius, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, or get a smartphone. You need to make your Genoise, Genoese, Gen, 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 why do I do this to myself? Genoese sponge. Now, in my talking about cake week, I mentioned that it was flourless. It's not flourless, it's that it's got no leavening, so there's no raising agents. I'm not really sure why I thought it was flourless, I don't know where I got that from but it, there's flour in it, trust me. You want, again, some pistachios. You want to grind them, again, in your food processor. I'm so glad I bought one, because otherwise this would have been an exhausting time for me. In a separate bowl, place your uh, castor sugar, or in my case, granulated sugar. Thank you very much to everyone who's been responding to that, uh, telling me that you can just use granulated sugar and everything works exactly the same. Sabine from Germany, she says she just uses it for everything, including like meringues and stuff, and I'm like, cool, let's give it a try. So put your sugar and eggs into a bowl and whisk until they are thick and pale. I made sure they were at least three times the size, like you really wanna get some volume in there. You kinda know it's ready when the, um, Beaters make a sort of mark, a trail on the top of the mixture. Then you want to fold in your melted butter and lemon zest. So just use one lemon, grate it down, pop that in there as well. Fold this gently, try not to lose any of the air because that's what's going to give you that rise. Now you'll want to fold your flour and pistachio mix into the mixture. You can do like a figure of eight. I'm sure there's many videos on YouTube that will tell you how to do this a little bit better than I'm doing right now. So you just want to fold this in. You'll want to put this into a, um, a 23 centimeter cake tin. I couldn't find one. Um, I have just moved to the US and all of my stuff is in shipping, so I have a 23 centimeter cake tin, but I didn't, I did, so I didn't really want to buy a new one, but also I couldn't find one in the supermarket that was nearby, and I didn't want to go all the way to Target, and there was all this other stuff going on, so I bought this instead. It's basically just a, a reusable tin foil, um, well not reusable, it's like a disposable tin foil cake tin, slash, like, um, what's that called, pie dish. Uh, I found out that the mixture was too much for one, so I had to spread it over two. I should have just spread it over three and it would have made my layering much easier, but never mind, it's fine. We'll move on, we'll move on. Pop this into the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. I found, because I'd spread mine out, it was about 20 minutes, but just go as long as you feel. You can use a skewer to check to see if it is ready, but it should be really springy to the touch, kind of like a, like a soft foam. 
So take this out, put this onto a uh, wire rack to cool inside the tin for about five to 10 minutes and then take out and leave it to cool completely. So now to make the creme au beurre, or as everyone who's watched the Bake Off knows, the thing you make with the spinach. So you need to take 125 milliliters of water, put this into a pan, and then put your spinach in there once it's started to boil and let the spinach wilt down. Once the spinach is kind of wilted, uh, transfer this to your blender or your food processor. Again, trust me, this is your best friend today. Uh, and then blitz this until it's a puree. It will go whatever colour the spinach wants to go, to be honest. I thought it was going to be quite light, but it turned into a really thick, almost like, like a really, really dark forest green. So you'll want to now, I hope you've probably bought some. If you haven't, you've got some time, maybe. Go out and get some muslin or a cloth or something to strain the puree through. You can use a sieve, but you're not going to be able to get all the moisture out of it and you might end up with little bits of bits. So get your muslin, put, your, um, put it over a bowl and pour your spinach puree into this. Squeeze it, gently cup it, cup the sack. <laughs> the recipe says you should get about 160 to 170 milliliters. I didn't check how much I got, I just hoped I had enough. Okay, you want to take more pistachios, that's right. Grind your pistachios in a blender and then add your kirsch. I didn't have kirsch, so I just used the juice from some dark cherries that were in a tin. Work just as well. Now you want to add your a tablespoon of your spinach water and 50 grams of butter. You need to blitz this, blitz this into a paste, and it you know it does become paste. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a peanut butter, but with pistachios. So pistachio butter. Get a pan and put um, sugar and 100 milliliters of your spinach water into this, and keep the others to the side because you'll need this later. Dissolve your sugar gently. You're kind of making like a like a syrup from this and boil for about two to three minutes until the uh, syrup is clear and forms a thread when pulled between two teaspoons. Mine didn't go clear because the, the spinach water was quite green, but I didn't really care because I'm not going for accuracy here, I'm just going for, for just managing it. By this point, this is like, what, three hours the way through? Ah, that's just what I'm trying to get there. I do not know how they managed to do this all in two hours. If you want to try it in two hours, crack on. I didn't. I just wanted to make sure I had something for Instagram. Um, what I did was I just kept picking up two teaspoons and picking up some of the, the syrup and kept tapping them together until and together that together until it forms um, the threads. There is a certain temperature on a sugar thermometer that you can go to, but I don't have mine, so I don't know what it is. Sorry guys. Take uh, two egg yolks and put this into, it says a stand mixer. I don't have a stand mixer, so I just put mine in a bowl, which meant filming was great fun. So you want to uh, whip your eggs together and then you want to add in your syrup that you've just made. Keep whisking it all the time, otherwise it'll stick to the side of the bowl. This was something that I found was a bit of a problem because I was also filming and being distracted at the same time. Make sure you keep whisking. You then want to add 100 grams of butter and uh, your pistachio paste that you made earlier. Whip this all together. This is making your creme au beurre, which is going to go, basically it's like the buttercream in between the layers of the cake. Once you've done this, leave this to the side. Now you want to go back to your cake. If you did what I did, which was make basically two layers, you'll want to make sure you slice one of them in half so you have three. You need three layers. If your sponge hasn't risen that much, I'd probably suggest maybe going back and doing that step again. If you find it's still not doing it, maybe spread it out over three cake tins and do it individually. At least you've got three layers. If you find it's still not rising, you really need to make sure that you are not knocking the air out when you're adding the ingredients. Right, on your bottom layer, whichever one you've decided that is, spread a layer of your creme au beurre. And then put another layer of your sponge on, and the creme au beurre. And then a layer of your sponge, and then the creme au beurre on top. And all the way around the sides, and just basically all over it, so it's completely covered. in the recipe but I just popped mine in the fridge for a little bit just so it would solidify just because I knew the next part was me putting the marzipan on and I thought if this is all slipping and sliding it's not going to go well. While I did this I took the marzipan out of the fridge which as I did tell you earlier so don't put it in the fridge because it was rock hard. I also forgot for those again who have been following if you watched my wagon wheel drama last week I don't have a rolling pin right now so I had to use um, a water bottle <laughs> like a sports bottle to try and flatten it all out, which didn't really help because I found that the marzipan had gone solid because I put it in the fridge. So, what you can learn from me is, don't put your marzipan in the fridge, make sure you have a rolling pin, 
And if it is a little bit too tough, just add a little bit of water to it and it will soften up. So once you've rolled your marzipan out, put this over to the top of the cake and then leave that to the side. Hopefully it'll be nice and neat. If you find it has torn and things, just smoosh it back together, add bits on, because you're going to be covering it with your fondant. Okay, now you need to make your fondant icing. And I didn't have fondant, so I used just icing sugar. Uh, I would recommend using fondant. There is a couple of recipes online where you can make your own fondant, and it involves glucose and other things, but again, I didn't have any of that. So what I did was, I put some gelatin into my fondant. So it was gelatin water. So, for your fondant icing, if you're doing this to the recipe, You'll want to put your fondant icing into the bowl, add three to four tablespoons of the remaining spinach and water until you've got a thick, pourable fondant. Add your pistachio essence if you have or found it, because I certainly didn't, a lot of people I know haven't found it. Mr. Baker's Cakes couldn't find it, and if he can't find it, and all the stuff he's done, I'm going to just move on. Okay, now you want to take a cake and put this onto a wire rack. What I did was I put this on a smaller plate underneath, just because it made life a little bit easier for me. Pour your fondant over the top, make sure it's nice and even, it will drip down. Uh, I hope you've got some pistachios left, because I just about did. And you'll want to blitz some of them up and put them around the base of your ghetto verre. And then you want to get your edible flowers. If you've found edible flowers, or if you can afford fancy edible flowers, or just flowers in general, then great, crack that on, put that on the top in a sort of crescent moon shape. I didn't have those, I couldn't afford a bouquet of flowers, so what I did was I just made my own origami flowers and used that as decoration. And here you can see my beautiful result. I mean, it's not that, I, I personally wouldn't give it that many bad points for presentation. As for flavour, ooh, taste test. It's time for the taste test. Ooh. Okay, here we go. The taste test of my legato beer. Ooh, it's surprisingly nutty. I mean, that it does taste pretty good. We've still got it in the fridge, um, and we're still eating it. Please eat some cake. Please eat some cake. And that's it. Legato beer. Would I make it again? Probably not. It did remind me a lot of the Princess Tarta, which I had done in 2014. Thank you very much for following me this far on my journey through the technicals of 2018 and the Great British Bake Off. Uh, if you want to see more, you can feel free to subscribe. I have the past four years on here. I also have some of my own recipes. I follow some other recipes. Tom and Mrs. Norris recommends I go back and remake the pastis di nata so that I can have a little bit more of a successful uh, tutorial video. Um, I'm hoping if I do go around to making it, they said they've got a vegan recipe, so I'd be interested in trying that one. So I might go back and make things again, particularly the Princess Tarta. That's it, that's basically it for me this week. Hopefully in the next week or the two, week or two, I'll get my shipping stuff from shipping, which means I'll have an apron on, so I feel so bare and naked. Uh, I'm also still trying to figure out the best place to film in my kitchen, and also trying to figure out to stop making is echoey. I might have to get like a microphone. So that's it. Don't forget to follow me on social media, all the things here, including TikTok, which is the new one. I make 15 to 30 second clips of some random bakes, which means if you don't want to watch a full video, got 15 seconds of your time, crack on and watch that. So my name is Colin, this is Colin's Time to Bake, Baking with the Bake Off 2018. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.